Good morning. This is Dawn Clevisol with Stress-Free Bookkeeping. So often I hear from business owners about how frustrated you are when you're trying to figure out your bookkeeping and you're having a hard time figuring out the accounting software that you were told was so easy to use. And I know it can be really frustrating and I understand your frustration. I've been there many times when I've wished that I had a roadmap to follow that would just tell me what I needed to know. And so I am creating these tutorials for you, um, hopefully to help guide you along the steps of the things that you should be doing in order to get your books done every month. Last week I talked to you about the sales receipts and the invoices. <clears throat> and I touched a little bit on undeposited funds and that is something that I wanted to talk to you about today. So step two, the second thing that you really need to do during the month is hold it all in. Um, the undeposited funds account is a holding account that lets you group your payments together so that they match the way that you deposit them at the bank. You use the Make Deposits feature of your accounting software to group your undeposited items together so that they match up with that deposit. So it's really important that you're taking this step, especially if you're in the type of business where you are taking checks to the bank, um, you might be taking cash to the bank, and you really want to make sure that you're able to go back and match everything up correctly. Now the easiest way to do that, you know, when you do your sales receipt or your invoice, um, you're receiving that payment, you've already learned that you should go to undeposited fund, that all of that should go to, into the undeposited funds account. So really the most simple way um, that I can tell you this is to think of the undeposited funds account is matching whatever envelope or system that you're using to store your um, checks until you take them to the bank. And so you can sit down with your accounting software. I've got QuickBooks open right here. Um, you can sit down with your accounting software before you even go over to the bank, write out your deposit slip, and come in here and deposit the money as well. So the way that you would do that is this plus sign here gives you a lot of functions inside of QuickBooks. And so you can see that un other under functions you have your bank deposit. So if you open that, I hope you guys can see my screen. I know on mine it's super tiny, so hopefully on your screen um, it'll be bigger so that you can really read it. Um, but let's open this up. So you can see the pink bank deposit window opens up, and this is where your under, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's tripping over my own time. These are where the items that you've put in your undeposited funds account end up. So these items here, I've recorded the payments, so the payments are recorded into the accounting system, but the deposit has not been recorded. If there are items sitting in here, so if you go ahead and you go in your accounting software to your Make Deposits window and you see a ton of items sitting here, that means none of them have been deposited to the bank account, and that can be a really big problem. I've seen accounts where it's been two years, I just cleaned up one, it was two years worth of deposits sitting in here. And what was happening is on the other end inside of their accounting system to make sure make their accounts reconcile, they were adding a journal entry that said, oh, okay, these items were deposited to the bank. Well, what they've done now in doing that, you're telling QuickBooks, okay, we've already received the payments on these items that are sitting here, but then because they didn't deposit these and they deposited a separate deposit inside the check register, they also tell the accounting system, we also have this income. So it really can double your income if you're not doing this correctly. So I really want you to be paying attention to these kind of things. Um, definitely go in and look and see if you have that kind of mistake having have happened inside of your books. And if you need help, uh, reach out to me. We have the Facebook group, Stress-Free Bookkeeping Social Club, that you can hop in there and ask a question. So really, this is a really great type of question to ask in there, and I'd love to, you know, do a separate video for you if that's something that, that came up. So in here, you really should only have the items that have not been taken over to the bank yet. So what I would do if I were running a business that had this cash and had the checks, I would sit down with this screen open with my deposit slip, and I would write, okay, I'm taking cool cars over, write that out, cool cars, you know, 16, 75, 52, and then Freeman's board, okay, I'm gonna take both of those. And then sometimes what you'll end up happening, having happen is 
okay, so I have these client payments that came in, but maybe I have another check that's not a client payment. Maybe I'm putting money into the bank account. So let's see. Let's see, I'm looking for how they have their account set up on the sample company. So if I was making a deposit, I'm looking at the equity here. Oh, they didn't set up an equity account for the owner. So I would do... I don't like that word. So I would do an owner's draw slash deposit um, slash investment account. And what this is is money put in, money taken out by the owner of the company. Um, and those terms will change depending on how you have your company set up. So if you are an LLC, you're going to be a member. So it would be members draw or investment. If you're incorporated, it would be a loan to shareholder if it was money that you were putting into the Thing, but it also might be um, a shareholder's distribution. So you've got to kind of watch your terminology as well. And then when, this is probably a good thing to show you as well. So here, when you're setting up an account, you can set it up directly inside of where you're needing to add this information, but the, you have to make sure that you're changing these other accounts to match the type of account that you're setting up. So it came up with income account, but that is not what we're setting up. We're actually setting up an equity account that's where your draws and investments are coming from. And then you want to go down here through the list and choose the right one. Let's see what they have. So they have owner's equity. And since I'm doing owner's draw investment, I'm going to choose owner's equity. If I was setting a, this up for a partnership, I would choose partner, that kind of thing. So owner's equity is our correct account type. Save and close. So now, say I was depositing $1,000 into the account. This is where you would add that. So you can take, oops, open that arrow up. So you can take all of these checks and deposit them at the same time. You just need to make sure that you're recording them. And like I said, the easiest way to do that is to sit down with your deposit slip, make everything out inside of QuickBooks. It also keeps you from making any type of um, notation mistake because you have already received these payments and you're checking that they match the check. It just keeps you from having any mistakes that might happen at the bank because maybe you added wrong when you were there. So, okay, I'm doing this deposit and then deposit in new. So now the deposit that I made is in the account. Now a couple things, if you wanted to go back and see what you just recently did, this little symbol here, you can click on that. And these are all the recent deposits in your account. If what you're looking for is not in there, you can click on this. I'm gonna see if it'll let me open a new window. So, oh, I didn't. I wanted to open a new window so I didn't lose that, but it's fine. So this shows all the deposits. Now, because this is a sample account, it doesn't have that many transactions, but you would have a pretty decent sized list here. But it gives you the opportunity to go back and look. The other place you can look at your recent transactions is in this search bar. If you just click in the search bar, it will come up with the things that you've recently done inside of your account. So just a quick tutorial today. I just wanted to make sure that you were a little bit more familiar with the undeposited funds. Um, honestly, nothing, nothing happens as far as depositing it into your bank account until you've cleared out your undeposited funds account. So really, this is what you should see when you go in there. Okay, guys? So make sure that you're doing that. Um, keep up to date on it. We want to just keep you up to, up to date. Now, if you're using QuickBooks uh, for their merchant account, it'll actually... Well, it's not showing up here because they don't have a merchant account hooked up, but you'll have an arrow thing that has the QuickBooks merchant account. But the nice thing is you don't actually, if you're using their merchant account, you don't have to use this um, function because it's going to match what's happening in your bank feed. And we're going to go through your bank feed um, in a couple lessons as well. Um, now, if you were doing credit card transactions, so I have some client accounts where they are using um, a different system like Square or they have their own customized web page that pulls their information in. So what I do with those accounts is I pull that information. I, I have a special program that I use to push it into QuickBooks and then all of the deposits show up in here. So what I like to do is I make sure that there's a just in the description that has the last four digits of the credit card number uh, for each of the clients that they've charged. It makes it so much easier because sometimes even though they all got charged, say, on the first of the month, 
it may not post to the bank in that order. Um, if it happened on a Friday, but it happened after a certain time, um, it may have hit a different batch. So having the credit card number next to it really helps. And then also I have that long list. I can look at that. And then what I like to do is pull up the merchant account um, information. The, the merchant account statements don't really have the information you need to match your bank transaction. So you need to have that login to your merchant account. But you can use that login to your merchant account. You can look at the batch for the day. And then you can come in. And if you had a bunch of stuff here, like I showed you a minute ago, you would check off everything that matched what happened at the bank. And then because you would most likely have merchant fees coming out, then you would add your merchant fees down below. So hope that makes sense to you. And actually, let me just, I'm going to go to this deposit that we just did just to show you. So assume, you know, these are all credit cards. Let's say this is Discover. So you had all your credit cards here. You've checked them off, but then you realize that you have your merchant fees that you need to account for. So you can come down here and you can type in, you know, Stripe or wherever your merchant account is, and then you would put merchant, I mean, have bank, yeah, bank. So you, I wouldn't recommend doing bank charges just because you want to keep them separate, but in this account, they don't have merchant fees set up, but you can do your merchant fees here. And then instead of a positive here, you would just do like negative 215 or whatever it was. You just want to make sure that this bottom line number matches whatever happened at the bank. So this should match what's on your bank statement, whether you're doing your credit cards, whether you're doing checks um, and cash. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I will see you again next Thursday. I usually on about um, 945, but I had to run to the bank today and it took a lot longer um, and they weren't able to help me. So anyway, um, you know that that goes. So um, a little late today, but look for me around um, 9.45, 10 o'clock on Thursdays, and I will talk to you soon.